Good morning. Welcome to Unit 5, Lesson 7, Adding and Subtracting to Solve Problems. Today we're going to apply what we know about sign numbers to different situations. And we're going to start with our warm-up. So our warm-up today is positive or negative. Without computing, a solution to negative 2.7 plus x equals 3.5, positive or negative. Number two, select all the expressions that are solutions to negative 2.7 plus x equals negative 3.5. Pause the video and take a few minutes to answer those questions now. All right, so let's take a look at that. So is the solution going to be positive or negative? So we started with a negative number, and we are going more negative. So we are going more negative instead of more positive. So in this case, I think the solution here would be negative. Select all the expressions that are solutions to negative 2.7 plus x equals 3.5. So we want to rearrange this in a way that we would be, be equaling these to x. So we're changing it so that it equals x. So let's look at the first one, negative 3.5 plus 2.7 would give us x, what do you think? Yeah, it would. So a is one of our answers. Let's look at b. 3.5 minus 2.7. Well, there's a quick problem here. First off, this is a positive number and we need it to be negative. So this one does not work. Let's look at letter C. So we have a negative 3.5 minus negative 2.7. And that's the same thing because we have the double negative as saying plus. So if A worked, then C would also work. Let's look at letter D. Negative 3.5 minus 2.7. Mm, well, we have a negative and it's going more negative. Whereas this kind of needs to be in between the two. So this one does not work. So that's our warm up. Moving on. So now we are going to look at a phone inventory. So here, let's read the question together. A store tracks the number of cell phones that it has in its stock and how many phones it sells. The table shows the inventory for one phone model at the beginning of each day last week. The inventory changes when they sell phones or get shipments of phones into the store. Oh, that sounds kind of like important information. So the inventory changes when they sell phones or get shipments of phones into the store. So I'm just going to highlight that. And then let's look at number one. What do you think it means when the change is positive? So if we have a positive change and it's going up, what do you think it means? Yeah, so when the change is positive, it means that they are receiving inventory. Oops. Inventory. All right, so then if it's negative, what do you think that means when it's negative?
Yeah, so negative means when they sold phones. Beautiful. All right, let's look at number two. What do you think it means when the inventory is positive or negative? So this time we're just looking at the inventory. So this column here, right here. So we're just looking at that column. What does it mean when the inventory is positive? Yeah, when the inventory is positive, it means they have phones in stock. What about when it's negative? Yeah, when it's negative, it means they are waiting on phones to come in or they sold more phones than they have. This you might also know as back order. So the word back order means the same thing. They sold more than they currently had in stock and they're waiting for more to come in. All right, let's look at question three. So question three says, based on the information in the table, what do you think the inventory will be at on Saturday morning? Explain your reasoning. So if we look at our inventory, you might miss some kind of pattern. So on Monday, we started with 18 and we sold two. Minusing two gave us negative 16. Or positive 16, sorry. 16 and we sold five phones. So when we minus five phones, we ended up with 11. Then we sold seven, which means we have four on Thursday because 11 minus seven is four. Then we sold six more phones and that's how we got our negative on Friday. But then we got more phones in stock. So let's go back to question three. Based on the information in the table, what do you think the inventory will be uh, at on Saturday morning? So if you look at this, what do we think the inventory will be on Saturday morning? Well, we had negative 2 and we're adding 20. So negative 2 plus 20. So we're going more positive. In this case, we're going more positive. So negative 2 plus 20 would be 18. So then we go back over here and we can say, I think the inventory will be positive 18 on Saturday morning. And why is that? Yeah, because they received 20 more phones.
All right. Number four, what is the difference between the greatest inventory and the least inventory? So we have that word difference. When you hear the word difference, what do you think of? Yeah, subtraction. So when we hear the word difference, we think subtraction or how far apart two numbers are. So we want to know the difference between the greatest inventory and the least inventory. So we will have to look at our previous page to figure that out. So the greatest difference. Let's see what is our largest what's our largest inventory the highest one yeah our highest inventory is 18. what's our least inventory our smallest amount of inventory that's right friday at 12. so here we would find our difference so we have 18 doo -doo -doo. we would have 18 minus and our least inventory is negative 2 minus negative 2. so we have 18 minus negative 2 and that's a double negative so when we have a double negative it becomes a positive so it would be 18 plus 2, and that gives us 20. So the difference between the greatest inventory and the least inventory is 20. All right, let's take a look at our next question. Ooh, we're going to be looking at some solar power. How cool is that? All right, let's read what they've got here for us. All right, so Han's family got a solar panel. Each month, they get a credit to their account for the electricity that is generated by the solar panel. The credit they receive varies based on how sunny it is. In January, they used $83.56 worth of electricity and generated $6.75 worth of electricity. Here is their electricity bill. Hmm. There's some important information I would want to pull out of this. So first, they receive a credit the credit they receive is, it varies based on the amount that they see. Do, 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 do. The credit varies. Each month they get a credit to their account. And in January, they used $83.56. Or that's what they were charged, their credit for what they generated was $6.75, and the amount they have to pay is $76.81. All right, and number one says, in July, they were traveling away from home and only used $19.24 of electricity. Their solar panel generated $22.75 worth of electricity. What was their amount due in July? Hmm. All right, so they were away from home and they used $19.24 of electricity. Their solar panel generated $22.75 worth of electricity. So here, we'd have to figure this out. 
So the greater number here is what they generated. So they're going to have more money that they generated than they used. So they won't, I don't think they're going to have a charge, but let's see. So our larger number is $22.75. .75. Our smaller number is 1924. So we want to find the difference between these two. So we have 5 minus 4, which gives us 1. 7 minus 2, which gives us 5. Bring down our decimal point. 2 minus 9, we can't do that. So we have to borrow and grab the one. So this becomes 12. 12 minus nine is three, and one minus one is zero. So they have a difference of $3.51. And because they generated more, that would give us a solar credit. And the electric company would owe them $3.51. So let's go ahead and write that over here. They were owed $3.51 because they use, they generated more electricity than they used. All right, let's look at number two. The table shows the value of electricity they used and the value of the electricity they generated each week for the month. What does the amount do for this month? All right, so we have the amount that they used and the amount that they generated. So we're going to want to add all of these numbers together and figure out, well, all right, so we're going to have to add all of these numbers together and find out what their total was and then find the difference. So let's go ahead and start that. We're going to start with 13. I'm just going to multi add going this way. So 5 plus 8, hmm, that's going to give us 13. Plus 2 is 15. Plus 5 is 20. So we're going to put 0. Carry the 2. 2 plus 4 is 6. 6 plus 7 is 13. Plus 1 is 14. Carry that one, bring down the decimal. One plus three is four, plus one is going to give us five, plus eight, hmm, that is going to give us 13, plus four will give us 17. One plus one is two, plus two is going to give us four, plus one is five, plus two again is seven. So they used $77.40 worth of electricity. Now let's look at what they generated. So we have three plus four, which is seven, plus zero, still seven, plus six, two, two, two is 13, carry the one. One plus three is four, four plus, 9 is 13, plus 7 is 20, plus 3 is 23, 2 plus 6 is 8, 8 plus 8 is 16, plus 7, 16 plus 7, we've got the 4, carry the 3, 23, plus 5, 28. Bring down our decimal point. So they generated $28.33.
Now we're going to do 7740 minus 2833. And we're just finding the difference. Uh oh, we can't take away from zero, so we're going to have to cross out this four. It becomes a three, and this is now 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. 3 minus 3 is 0. Bring down that zero, that decimal. Uh-oh, we can't take 8 away from 7, so we're going to have to borrow. That becomes 6. 17 minus 8 is going to be 9. 6 minus 2, that's going to be 4. So this month's bill will be $49.07. $49.07. All right, number three. What is the difference between the value of electricity generated in week one and week two and the difference between week two and week three? So we want to know what is the difference between these two weeks and then we're going to find the difference for this week and this week together. So let's go ahead and find our difference. So week one, they generated less than they used on week two. So we're going to subtract those to find the difference. So we have 21.78 minus 13.45. Eight minus five is three. 7 minus 4 is 3. Bring down the decimal. Uh-oh, we can't subtract that 1. 11 minus 3 becomes 8, and 1 minus 1 is 0. So the difference from week 1 to week 2 is $8.30. And we said that was $8.33. And then we can just start our sentence for the next one, the difference between week two and week three. When we find our answer, we can put it right here on the line. All right. So now we're going to find the difference between our two green ones. So we have 2178 and 1812. And we can actually just keep that right there and subtract. So 8 minus 2 is 6. 7 minus 1 is going to be 6. Bring down our decimal. Uh-oh, 1 minus 8. We can't do that. We're going to have to borrow. 11 minus 8 is going to leave us with 3. So the difference is going to be $3.66. So we go here, $3.66. And then we can go ahead and look at the next page. So, 7.4 is differences and distances. It says to plot these points on the coordinate grid. So, I want you to pause and take a moment to plot these points on the grid and answer each of these four questions. All right, welcome back. So, we're going to go ahead and we're going to plot those points. Let's see. Do, do, do. So, we have for letter A, 
we have five, four. So I'm going to go over five and up to four. For B, I have five, negative two. So I'm going to go over five, down to two. For letter C, I have negative three, negative two. And letter D, I have negative three, two, four. So I have my points plotted. I'm going to go ahead and label those. So this was A, B, C, and D. Oh, that doesn't look like a D. D. What shape is made if you connect the dots? Hmm. So if we were to connect these dots, we would have a rectangle. So we can just go ahead and write rectangle. What are the side lengths of figure A, B, C, and D? So we've got to figure out what is the length between A and B, and B and C, and they should be the same on both sides because it looks like an equal shape. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So it would be six on both sides. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight on top and bottom. So the side lengths are eight and six. So it's an eight by six. Number three. What is the difference of coordinates B and C? Hmm, what is the difference? How far apart are they? So the difference here would be eight. What is the difference between the coordinates of C and D? Oh, so going this way, it would be negative 8, and going this way, it would be positive 8. And number 5, how do the differences of the coordinates relate to the distances between the points? Well, this is the distance between the points, and the difference is either negative or positive. So I would say the numbers are the same, or the numbers have the same absolute value, but different signs. Can I have your attention, please? We are now in period six. We are now in period six. Thank you. All right. And for your homework, I'm going to have you complete the pages on 397 to 398, all of those questions, and I'll see you next time.